Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a variety of things. Um, this video kind of sparked off as an idea because I was watching Blackish and the episode, I think the last episode that came on, hope you guys seen it. If not, sorry, kind of a little spoiler alert. When it starts to fall apart, I think we do too. But no, um, it sparked off from that episode because it basically focused on marriage issues. Um, how we don't listen to hear, how we're a little bit more aggressive or maybe a little bit more passive. Um, and this has kind of always been on my mind for like the past couple of months because I really want to, I keep saying like, there has not been an opportunity for women and men to come together and talk about marriage issues, talk about our frustrations, just talk about things that are really getting under our skins. And maybe you want to be a better wife or maybe you want to be a better husband. And I was really excited when I seen this episode of Blackish because it touched on a lot of issues that many marriages go through. You have children, some of your children are going off to college, you have a younger child, who you, your parenting skills are kind of have changed since your first child. You know, I have definitely witnessed that as being a mom of two. My parenting style versus with Malik is a little bit different versus with Sydney because I had him, I had him at what, going on 21. And I had my daughter, Sydney, when I was what? I was going on 24, 25-ish, something like that. So, you know, times have changed. You have changed as an individual, and a lot of times that is what happens in marriages. So, I did a poll on my Insta Snap. Uh, yeah, Insta Snap, because <laughs> you know it's like Snapchat. And I, it just came to me like, Steph, we need to do something. I'm so curious to see what other wives or husbands, if my daughter don't stop opening this door, Lord Jesus, um, she has her tablet blowing. Like, I don't hear that, girl. But yeah, so I did a poll and I wanted to see how many people did one or the other. So that's why I wanted to do this video because it sparked off from the Blackish the episode and it really kind of like hit me because I've always said that we don't have these things. We, you know, marriage is very, what's the word for it? Scarce these days because so many people are getting divorced and I feel like there aren't enough content out there promoting the good and the ugly of what it is to be married. Yeah, I don't get on social media and blast my drama if I have any or if I'm frustrated. You know, I did that in my younger days when I was childish, but I kind of felt like this needs to be talked about because we don't talk about it enough. So I wanted to kind of go over the polls that I had the questions that I had put out there and go over the answers. So maybe this can kind of give you some insight, maybe you relate. And this is all anonymous. I don't know who sent it in because I never um, swiped up to see who selected yes or no. I just wanted to get a percentage of how many people thought about this, thought about some of these questions that are every day. We go and check it out. And I'll kind of like put them up there. So I first started off and said, hey y'all, my next Insta snaps will be polls. Help me out, it is for a video. So, my first question was, in your relationship or marriage, which type of communicator are you? I have passive and I have aggressive. So if you don't know what aggressive is, aggressive is like you come off very, your approach is very different from someone who is a little bit more passive. They're a little bit more calm. They're a little bit more timid in their approach on how they conversate with you. Um, not saying that they don't wanna have an argument with you. They just approach things in a different manner than someone who is very aggressive, who goes headstrong on. So that results what, let me go back cause it goes so darn fast, was 44% passive and 56% aggressive. So my next question was, do you apologize to your partner when you are wrong? 89% said yes, 11% said no. I think some of y'all lying. Cause I have witnessed a lot of people come across saying that they have not apologized to something that their spouse has done 
or their spouse has said something or their partner has said something where I just wish he or she apologized when they were wrong in a conversation. So let's talk about that. Have you ever done anything where it wasn't big to you, but it was very big to your spouse? For instance, me and my husband, we fight all the time about where the hell we want to eat. Typical-ish, typical relationship drama, <laughs> which shouldn't even be. We got into an argument about where we wanted to eat. He asked me where I wanted to eat, and I was like, I don't know. And he's looking at me like, well, I don't know either. You're gonna figure it out because I'm not wasting my gas to go do this, blah, blah, blah. So we weren't talking to each other. Then we kind of like let it blow past. We laughed about it and we apologized. We kept it moving forward. <laughs> so the next question was, did having a child change your relationship slash marriage? And I said, be honest. Having children changes the whole dynamic of your relationship. People don't want to hear this, but it's the actual factual truth. Having children changes who you are as an individual because at the end of the day, you come last. Your child comes first. And it's not saying that you are putting your relationship or your marriage to the back burner because at the end of the day, your marriage is what is centered around this whole unit that you have created. But a lot of people lose themselves. You know, I know for me, I developed PTSD after having my son and some men don't know how to deal with that with a woman. They don't know what it's like to deal with a woman who has PTSD, who is depressed, who has a lot of anxiety issues. Um, it's really hard for men to deal with this. So that changed our dynamics when my son came, but we got through it. We, we talked, he helped me cope, you know, by allowing me to go out and hang with my girlfriends and are allowing me to do things. Some people have a lot of arguments when a baby comes. You know, it's really sad. It's like some things that may have been really minor to you start to come full swing and it changes the dynamic of who you are in that relationship. I've seen so many families go bye-bye because they had a child and they didn't know how to if, communicate effectively. They didn't know how to express themselves with their child and Sometimes there has already been preconceived issues. You just never really focused on them. It is what it is, right? So my next question was, does your partner cut you off in a disagreement? 73% said yes. That is horrible. 27% said no. No one should feel like they have to dumb be dumbed down when someone cuts them off in their conversation i know what me and sid what we do is he'd be like you won't let me finish or i'm saying you won't let me finish you know how we get sassy and smart y'all know out there how women is come on let's not lie let's not put on a little front but it is what happens not everyone reacts the same way as you when it comes to an argument so some people naturally cut you off and sometimes it's so important for you to speak up and say hey don't cut me off i have not done my point i have not got my point out you know let's come back to this issue if it is really bothering you guys because that's how a lot of disagreements turn into major major arguments to the point you're not even speaking to your spouse anymore so we need to fix that number so i'm going to do this poll again and we're going to come back to that one because that's hard 73 percent some of y'all need to get it together. Do you avoid conflict just to avoid an argument? 60% said yes. Oh my God. And I know it was a lot of people that took my test. Although I didn't swipe up, it does show you all those little things at the bottom. 44, I meant 40 percent said no. I know for me, I don't like confrontation. I don't like to argue. I don't like to because I am someone who has dealt with anger issues um, majority of my life. And I, my husband can tell you this to this day. If it wasn't for him, I would never have calmed down the way that I was when I approached a conversation. So now, sometimes I do avoid conversations because I don't want to have conflict. I don't want to have disagreements, but sometimes it's very healthy for you to get whatever is out off your chest because it can lead into things that are just far more worse. And that's not something that we want. That's not something that you want. You know, I'm promoting family sticking together. 
So my next question was, does making more or less money in your relationship slash marriage cause conflict? 45% said yes, 55% said no. Me and Sid, I don't think, I think you have to have a great balance. Um, not a lot of people can handle their finances, not a lot of people can budget. So I think if you have someone who is a good strategic type of individual like how I am, then go over the numbers and kind of figure out who should pay what. You know, I'm so tired of that quote going around where if you pay, pay half and half, you know, you're a slave or to your spouse or, you know, you have a roommate. And I'm just like, do you not even know what a marriage is? A marriage at the end of the day is 100%. It is not a 50-50. So regardless if you're paying cable, regardless if he's paying half of the mortgage and you're paying half of that mortgage, the bill is getting paid, right? I think that's more important than who's paying, paying more or less. You know, yes, at the end of the day, you want your man to be a provider. But why have your man struggle if you know dang on well he cannot afford to pay a mortgage by himself? That's not what a marriage or relationship is about, especially a marriage. Then the day when you fall short, I'm here to lift you up. I'm here to pick up the pieces. That is what matters. That's why you have to save and plan for the future and stop worrying about all these materialistic things that's going on in the world. All those things will be there. So the next question was, have you ever resented your partner? This was a good one because I have noticed watching the Blackish issue, she resented him for some of the things that he was doing and they weren't talking about their issues. 49% said yes. It's, oh, I said yes, but we fixed it. And then another, then the other thing said, no, I speak up, which was 51%. That's actually really good. I'm really proud of you guys out there who answered that question because a lot of times it is so easy for you to resent your partner and this is where a lot of bigger issues come into play. So my next question was, has social media caused conflict within your relationship? 60% said yes, 40% said no. I know it's hard, we live in a world of technology going to major levels, like major. Sometimes you have to learn to put the phone down. Like Sid, he'll be like, you always on that dang old phone and I'm like, Sir, first of all, I have business, I have a business and I have a brand. So I'm always trying to be on my phone, trying to see what's happening. But sometimes you have to say, take a chill pill. What matters most? Is it your marriage or is it a brand? You know, I think you have to try to find that common denominator. You have to figure out what matters. I really like the post that I found out that was floating around where it said, um, we, everyone puts their phone in a bucket at dinner time and then whoever picks it up has to pay the dinner. I think fun activities like that where it's stimulating your mind to not think about your, your phone is amazing. You know, sometimes you don't need to be on your phone. You just need to stay focused on what is happening. What is really happening within your marriage? And this is why a lot of relationships lack communication because we're not talking, we're not communicating, we're not expressing how we feel. And that's where a lot of dialogue gets misinterpreted because I know if I'm texting someone, you don't know my tone of voice, you know? So you may say, well, dang, why she say it like that? But it's like, we're not on the phone. We're not face to face. So we have to get a lot of face to face activities going on within your marriage. Go to dinner, leave your phones home. Maybe one of you guys bring your phone, but leave it in the car, something like that. I'm gonna take that on my own tip, you know, take my own tip. Well, the next question was, have you secretly wished you cheated on your partner due to communication barriers not effectively working? And then the thing says yes, but never. And then other, ill no. And I um, also put like physically cheating, like you didn't physically cheat, but you thought about it, it was a thought. 49% said yes, 51% said no. It's kind of close. But um, I think a lot of people, we're in a world of social media, so I think a lot of us look at celebrities and we say, wow, she's beautiful or he's gorgeous or whatever the case may be. Not that you want to be with that person, but I think a lot of us do put it out there like, okay, damn, like she getting on my nerve. If we weren't together, I know it's sad to even say, but people do this. People, I have heard so many conversations about this. So that's why I really want to put it in there to kind of see like, what do you guys think? 
And then someone asked me, could have throw this question in when they were going through, and I said, oh yeah. I said, you know, I wasn't even thinking about that. So my last question was, have you ever cheated within your relationship, and are you still together? 20% said yes, working it out. 80% said hell no. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. But it happens in relationships and marriages. It's sad that it does happen, but it does happen. You know, and that's why conversations like such need to be discussed. We need to get back to communicating effectively. We need to take back marriage and make it stronger because we live in a world full of temptation and it does happen. It does happen. You know, I remember my grandparents telling me things, you know, and them being together for so long. And the one thing that they said that got them through was communication. You know, they lacked it in the beginning, but guess what? They focused so heavily on communicating 10 times more and making their unit stronger. And that's why I really wanted to do this video because I seen that blackish video and I was like, you is speaking on so many levels that mothers go through, fathers go through. Having children really, and that's where it kind of shaped like with the children, you know, you are going to work, you know, you're trying to be a brand, you know, you're trying to do your own thing and at the end of the day, you're trying to take care of your, your spouse, you're trying to take care of the kids. You're trying to be 100% you and it is really freaking hard. I did a uh, post on my Facebook yesterday and said, parents, vent below. And there were so many frustrations. But it is so important to talk about these issues because you can relate to someone else who is going through this similar situation. Maybe they have some advice for you, maybe they don't, but maybe you guys can come together and try to figure some things out. That's why it's so important to talk about it. You know, marriage is not upholded to the standard that it is today. So many people are getting divorced. So many people are losing their minds because of divorce or being in a marriage or being married to someone that they don't want to be with anymore because they're not they're no longer that person anymore i always say we grow and we glow and sometimes we miss out on the most important parts of our life because we are so stressed out with being a mother we're so stressed out if you're not a mother you know going to work trying to make ends meet you know all of these things can create so many tensions within your relationship to the point where it's like damn who am I? You know, who the hell am I? But that's why it's so important to talk about it. You know, I really want to get this brunch thing popping because this could be face to face type of environment where we come together, we talk about it and we cry. Maybe we cry. Maybe we we laugh at some issues. Maybe you tell your story that can inspire someone. You know, I have met so many people that are, have been married for a long time and they have always given me nothing but great advice. I remember, you know, just talking to some of my coworkers and they just giving you great advice, whether if the situation is major, because someone who's older than you and that has been in many relationships can probably give you so much advice that you have never even realized because one, you never asked. And that's another thing, the conversation needs to be discussed. So guys, I really hope this video finds you. I really hope this video can inspire you to keep pushing. Maybe your relationship is is like down here right now, but you trying to get here. Maybe this video can kind of give you some insight of what you need to do. Maybe you need to communicate a little bit more. Maybe you need to tell your spouse what is bothering you. You gotta stop doing that. If you sit and keep quiet when an issue is bothering you, it's gonna build into 20 more issues. And some things are gonna go straight over your head to the point it probably wasn't even that deep. Yeah, so guys, I'm gonna end here. Hope it wasn't too long, but I really wanted to do this video. I was super excited of just testing it out and seeing what you guys had to say in my poll. And it gave me some insight from my own marriage, especially that blackish episode. So if you haven't seen that, you should really check it out. And there's also a movie coming out about how a woman and a, a, a couple, they have kids and she lost her, her self identity because you know, we gain weight when we have babies, you know, and all these issues where you don't have me time. Can't wait to see that movie. I think it start, I think it's Lily or something like that. I have to research it and look it up. I seen it in the um, previews yesterday when I went to the movies. And I'm just like, God is showing you signs, Steph. You need to get this video up. We need to make this brunch pop.
popping because it needs to be discussed. I couldn't wait no more of trying to get this video on here, so I probably look crazy. Because I was like, no, y'all know me. I'm not going to get behind this camera and be someone that I am not. I need to like put no makeup on today. I just felt like being my natural self. Even with the curves, y'all. But yes, I'm going to end right here because I can keep going and going on this topic because I'm so passionate about keeping families together, especially if they are willing to work it out. I don't believe if you are unhappy, you should stay in a situation because that doesn't solve anything for you. And if you have children, it doesn't solve anything for your child. There are so many great people out here who co-parent. So don't ever think that you have to stay in a relationship that you are miserable in. If you have done everything that you have possibly done to make that relationship work and that person isn't trying to meet you to the finish line, end it. Move on with your life and keep it trucking and pushing. But other than that, I promote family staying together. I promote it to a tenth. So guys, I'll see you in the next one and stay tuned for my brunch. Maybe we can get it popping this year. I'm hoping we're going to leave it up to the Lord himself with that one. So I'll see you guys in the next one.